Hey, my name is T. Cooper, and I'm the director of the I Am Samantha music video short film. My first feature documentary film was man-made. It was about four transgender male bodybuilders as they get ready to compete at the only all-trans bodybuilding competition in the world. It played at Frameline, uh, won some audience awards at other festivals like Outfest, Newfest, and whatnot. Uh, and at one of those festivals, the uh, artist Benjamin Scheuer came across the film and um, saw it, and he said he loved it. And so I think when it came time to figure out what to do for the video slash short film for his his first uh, song, I Am Samantha, on, on the new label, Atlantic, I think I was on the top of the list as far as folks he wanted to talk to. And, you know, we talked and we hit it off and he sent me the song and kind of told me the story behind it. He actually sent me some other songs of his that were really beautiful and I was really attracted to the storytelling. Um, and what's so funny about the song, I Am Samantha, is yes, it's a trans song. It's about trans identity and a trans journey. And yes, that appeals to me and that speaks to me, but but it was really just the the very universal line in the song that has nothing to do with being trans, but everything to do with being a human. And the line is, when you have kids, you can't choose who they are. And um, as a parent, that was what sold me on the song and sold me on the project m more than anything, you know, outside of identity and my identity as a trans man. It was about that relief and release um, uh, of of just the, the the beautiful kind of gift that you can give a child um, to let them truly discover who they are and be their best selves. And why wouldn't a parent want a kid to be their best selves? It's one of the most confusing um, things I see so much around me in my own life and other and other folks' lives. Uh, it's just hard to figure out. And that that one line in the song puts it so succinctly. It was just so beautiful. And and that's why I was like, I'm in. Um, and it worked out. I pitched them the idea um, of my idea was to kind of create this all trans world, not to put bells and whistles and signs up, but just create a beautiful world that just happens to be translated, uh, sorry, populated by all trans people. Um, and, you know, why not? Why, why isn't that the world? Uh, why does it matter in a way? Um, you know, it's, it's almost an upside down world. But also when you enter the world of the film, um, it's just... It's just a world and that guy, you know, walking with his girlfriend and that lady pushing a stroller and that woman working in her yard, they all just happen to be trans. And, and for me, it was about kind of subtly making the case uh, for our existence and also the fact that, you know, one trans person's story is one trans person's story and we're all Samantha, not just all trans people, but we all as humans are Samantha in a way. So the behind the scenes video um, kind of came from the label in the sense that they had a, had a budget that they wanted to um, direct to toward a behind the scenes kind of mini doc, uh, really chronicling this, what I felt was a pretty historical moment to have so many trans people on screen and trans people exclusively, 27 uh, trans cast members. And um, my wife, Allison Glock Cooper, here's a photo because she couldn't be here. That, whoa, things are backwards on camera, sorry. This is obviously her, and this is obviously me. Um, at any rate, uh, we collaborate on film and, and television and, and also books together. Um, so Allison d directed and ran a crew around our set on both days that we filmed in Atlanta and really just spent some time um, with the cast and some crew. And um, I, th I think it was important to kind of hear what brought everybody there you know, all of their paths and all of our different paths that brought us, you know, on that one set for those two days. It was just really nice to kind of hear from everybody. And um, it's such an emotional video for me. Every time I see the behind the scenes, I, I, I tear up because I just, I feel so grateful that, um, that people trusted me and trusted me with their lives and their, their likenesses and their bodies and their safety. And it's such a privilege to be able to be visible. Everyone who agreed to be on you know, on camera and be in this film. It's just, it's, it's, it's a privilege for us to be able to be visible for those who couldn't um, and who can't. And so um, I just think that the video just did a beautiful job. I think that, that um, the way that Allison pieced together um, 
really the insistence on these stories and and how important um, it is to to allow space and to make space and to take space in this world for our trans bodies and our trans lives. Um, I think it. I think that the BTS video really makes a case for that. So I'm really I'm really proud that that exists um, and that the two the two pieces get to go together. Hi, I'm Amy Jenkins, director of Wishes. And I'm Adam Cizwerda. When did you realize you were making a film and how did this film come together? Wishes is a longitudinal film that's rooted in home movies. Um, it spans a decade. Um, and it began with kind of the common ritual of filming Adam's birthdays, uh, basically home movies. It was really the main time that I would film him. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it really kind of evolved. I didn't realize anybody would ever see this footage, but um, that annual ritual ended up um, really showing the natural evolution of Adam's personhood. So I decided to incorporate it into a short film. Cool. So Adam, uh, since you grew up on camera, does it feel natural to be filmed, especially with a mom who's a filmmaker? Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty used to it by now since I grew up um, always being filmed by my mom. And it's really easy for me to act pretty natural in front of the camera just like how I would usually be um, if there wasn't a camera uh, except for the times when she like randomly shows up in my room before noon which is when I usually wake up because I'm a teenager uh, I don't enjoy being filmed then but as long as I've had some food I'd say <laughs> I'm used to being <laughs> filmed yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, food, a shower, at least an hour after you're awake, and then yes. you can talk. Yes, I need, <laughs> I need some time. <laughs> okay. All right, so Little Bird told me that this is part of a feature documentary. I never knew. Can you tell us a little bit about where the project is at? Um, yeah, do you want to start on that, sure. actually? Yeah, um, so I'm starting my senior year in high school around now, and um, we are continuing to film for another year or so. I have a camera, and I'm filming my friends whenever we hang out, and I'm trying to capture uh, just teenage life and, and identity, um, not necessarily only with gender, but just everything. Um, and yeah, that's where I'm at. We started filming about uh, two years ago, so essentially um, the feature film Adam's Apple, as it's titled now, um, is it starts around where Wishes left off um, when Adam's about 15, right before he um, begins testosterone. Yeah. Um, it also dips back into his childhood and our family life, um, uh, but uh, primarily um, is going to be covering Adam's high school life and um, his generation and gender. Um, and so we're hoping that we will wrap up filming about a year from now and then edit, etc., and have a 2023 premiere. Cool. So, yeah, keep your eyes out for it. 2023, Adam's Apple. Yay. <laughs> and thank you for watching Wishes. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Aloha nui mea katoa pauloa e nahoa makamaka katoa e launa nei. Mahalo nui na to oto ki paana mai. O au no teia o hinale moana waangkalu. Thank you. Mahalo to all of you for viewing Kapai Mahu and for joining us on this journey. So much we've learned over the time spent, and I ask all of you to continue to honor and respect as well as protect our sacred and honored sites.
Aloha, everyone. I'm Dean Hamer, part of the team, and we are so happy to be back here at Framelight. Believe it or not, this is our 12th film at this festival, and it's our fifth film with Kumu Hina, who we first met as a film subject, but now joins us as a producer and director. Hina told us the story of Kapai Mahu when we first met her, and we've been wanting to make a film about it ever since. We decided that the best way to tell this legendary and transcendent story was through the medium of animation, which is provided by our wonderful collaborator, Daniel Sousa. Aloha, I'm Joe Wilson. The message of the film is that all people should be included and respected for the gifts they bring. It seems tailor-made for these tumultuous times. So we hope you enjoy this journey to the Pacific and may the healing spirits of Kapai Mahu stay with you. Ahui ho. Aloha. Hi, my name is Martina Matskin and I am the director of The Name of the Sun. Hello, I am Lucia Vela. I am the producer of The Name of the Sun. Lucho is the protagonist of a short film and he's going through puberty. He's at the border between childhood and adolescence. And he's starting to see the world is much more complex than he thought it would be. He's starting to ask himself who he really is. And I thought a good place to symbolize that border is the beach, because it seems a place between the known and the unknown. The unknown being the ocean, this huge, mysterious, strong thing um, that it can be transparent on the outside, but it's completely dark at the bottom. And it, it's really attractive, but at the same time, it's full of danger. You, you never know what's inside. And I think when Lucho sees the ocean, he also can feel the world, the future, its complexity. And I think he also realizes that he will be able to get into it, to face it, but he will also need a lot of support and a lot of love. Um, so that's what the ocean means in the short film. Fue un desafío. Eh interpretar a un personaje tan distinto a mí eh, y menor que yo eh, eh, fue, siento que me puede meter bien en el personaje de un nene de 13 años que estaba pasando por un momento tan difícil pero más que difícil fue, para mí fue un desafío, porque es muy, muy diferente a mí. Eh, su experiencia, su personalidad y no, no tanto los sentimientos, porque los sentimientos los compartimos, eh, pero sí su manera de enfrentarlos, <laughs> Short films are usually the first steps of directors and producers. So being in an international festival such as La Berlinale, it's a huge opportunity of getting in touch with producers from all over the world and to being invited to many other festivals. The Berlinale gave us the opportunity as Latin American filmmakers to achieve the visibility that otherwise would be impossible for us. So we are very happy. And despite this year is very strange and very difficult for everybody, knowing that many people would meet our story in many places makes it worth. Thank you. Hello, we're the creative team behind Bind. My name is Emery Child Johnson. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm the writer director. And I'm Jacqueline Chan, and my pronouns are she, her, and I'm the DP. Uh, so, Emery, uh, can you talk? How did the idea come to you for this story? 
the idea behind the story kind of came from my background in Asian American studies, where I was doing some research into the queer Asian diaspora. For BIND, I was interested in exploring the idea of the trans Asian diaspora and what that entails, uh, specifically the, the binds we find ourselves in when we're negotiating our gender identity and our home culture. And can you talk about, uh, a bit about the casting process? Definitely. Uh, for the casting process, I was really fortunate uh, because it was the first time I'd ever casted for a short scripted film. For the role of Ma, I did a video audition with uh, Kate Chang and she was very patient, especially with my first time doing that. And she's fantastic in the film. For the role of Jules, I had shared a casting call for a trans actor to a friend of mine in the trans Asian community, and they sent it to their friend. And that friend had shared it with Hua Chai, who ended up coming into auditioning for the role. So it was really cool how my trans Asian community kind of came together to get this film created. And for Jacqueline, uh, the film is shot beautifully. Can you tell us a little bit about your artistic influences for this film? Yeah, um, I remember we we were talking about other films with um, mother and or, or parent and child um, relationships, and we, we thought of Moonlight, and there was this beautiful scene, um, very gritty and very um, powerful. So the handheldness added to that tension, and uh, we short sighted the characters to really kind of get the disconnect between them. And then um, we did a lot of slant canted angles um, to kind of get into Jules' mind and their um, body dysphoria. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, thanks for having us, Framelink. Hi, I'm Sheer Avery, subject, writer, and producer of Sheer Avery To Be Continued. Hi, I'm Abram Serta, and I'm the director and editor of our short documentary. <laughs> I believe this short film is a part of a larger ongoing project. How did you two meet and decide to make a film together? Great question. Abram and I met when I was 15. He was 20, studying film at UCLA and interning for Outfest Los Angeles while I volunteered for the film festival. We began shooting when I was 17, a year and a half later, after we had developed a long lasting friendship. Yes, um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We met at Outfest um, while I was um, a film student, just like Shir said, and we started shooting a project, just everything that was going on in Shir's life at the time, um, homelessness and navigating a relationship with their mom. And it developed into a feature length film that we're still fundraising for. Actually, we ended up cutting a short film, this short film that you just saw to help us fundraise, to get us um, where we need to be with the film. So if you wanna support us, please email us at sheeravery.documentary at gmail.com. And I will read the second question, Sheer. Films end, but life keeps going. How have you been since filming ended? My goodness. Yeah, life just keeps on going. And that's why I decided to title the short documentary, Sheer Avery To Be Continued, because life keeps right on um, beyond just a moment in time. And since then I have survived wrongful and discriminatory incarceration in rural Pennsylvania and have risen from the ashes since then to serve as a 2018 Biden Fellow for LGBTQ equality at the Biden Foundation and am now living and thriving and living my best life in New York City as a policy associate for the Office of the New York City Public Advocate. In addition to the million and one other things I put my heart and soul into to empower the next generation for our movements for social change. Abram, I have a question for you now. You. Can you talk a bit about your immersive cinematography that transports us into their, my life? Q. Tell us the tea. Uh, the tea. Um, I love this question. Honestly, the 
cinematography and the approach to the film was a bit accidental, but it was intentional um, in the sense that I knew the audience needed to be, to feel the closest to experiencing what Sheer was experiencing it as Sheer was experiencing it. Because I feel like so many films about trans folks um, are usually a cisgender person's perception of what trans life is like. And so with this film, I really wanted it to feel like you were living with Sheer and not watching Sheer live. Um, yeah, so that's yes. it. Yes, and thank you so much for that, Abram. Truly touching. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Okay, <laughs> cute. Uh, I love we'll it. it in like four minutes, so. Yeah. Um, we did it. Fine. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Um, Much love, Frameline fam. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>
to start a conversation, really. Um, yeah. Girls can play football. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah. Thank you for having us and hope you have a good festival. The film we have in the festival is called Dance Dance Evolution. My name is Jules Roskam and I am the director of the film. Hi, my name is Max Jack Monroe and I am one of the subjects of Dance Dance Evolution. Hi, my name is Sid Robbie, and I had the pleasure of being a part of Dance Dance Evolution. Jules, what led you to making a film focused on the dance community? Are you a dancer? Um, no, I am definitely not a dancer. Um, what interested me in making this film was two things. I was thinking in general about um, uh, what areas of like gender transformation are not often talked about when people talk about trans people. Um, and this was the second um, film in a trilogy that I'm working on. Um, and I, I got interested in it particularly because um, I used to love to dance. And oddly enough, for me, the only, like after coming out as trans, dancing is one of the only places where I feel self-conscious about my gender. Um, and it took me a really long time to figure out that that was what was happening and that I suddenly become very aware of the fact that like I'm perceived as a man and I get very caught up in like what is it that men are supposed to dance like. Um, uh, every now and again I'm able to let go of that and just like enjoy the fact that I like to dance. Um, but it just made me curious about like what other trans people's experiences were with dance. Um, and interestingly enough, everyone and no one in the film seemed to have that experience, um, which I was glad to see. So how did I find my cast? Um, I mostly found my cast through social media. That's been how I've been casting for, that's how I cast for the first film in this trilogy. Um, and that's just in general, I've been using social media mostly for casting and for work, uh, I don't use it a lot for personal reasons. Um, and it's been really amazing because it's allowed me to extend my what, my, what would be my regular networks and find people that I didn't already know and make new connections. And um, it's been really great. Um, so I'll pass it to you guys, Sid, maybe you wanna start first and then Max. Um, I wanted to be a part of Dance Dance Evolution because what a unique opportunity. I mean, I don't think I've ever had anyone ask me what my relationship to dance is like during my life transition, during my transition. And so that was just such a unique opportunity. I could not pass it up. And being someone who loves to dance, um, you know, I was really nervous because I didn't know exactly what to expect or would there be music playing? I didn't, I didn't know if I would just be, you know, dancing to the beat of my own mind, but, um, it was such a fun experience and you know meeting Jules was great and um, I'm just really happy that I got an opportunity to do something like this. It's very special. I decided to become involved uh, with Dance Dance Evolution because I have loved to dance my entire life and once I saw the ad um, and um, I just thought it was a really unique project. I'm not just looking at why people dance but why trans people dance and what are some of the barriers that whether they're internalized or externalized barriers um, to trans people in dance and um, I also thought it was very cool um, coming from Baltimore and having the opportunity to work with a local director um, and being part of something that seemed pretty fun but also historical in its own right and I'm very glad to have been a part of it. The energetic editing and colorful cinematography really capture the essence of dance. Can you talk about your creative process? Um, I That could be a very long answer, but I'm gonna keep it very short, which is just to say that um, I think for me, the most interesting thing about the film in terms of like creative process and maybe how it's different in some ways than other dance films is that it's not music heavy, like there really is no music in it. And for me, that was kind of, that was the thing I was most interested in was 
like how does the body itself make a rhythm, um, both visually and then also we did a lot of trying to record the sounds of people's act actual bodies in the space. Um, so they were like listening to the music on a headphone so that we could be recording like what their, what their body sounded like. Um, and I think that's one of the things that's unique about the film is um, it really invites you to like be with the body. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I also knew that I, I was really inspired by, that we took a lot of inspiration for the look of the film from um, David LaChapelle's, some of his, photo uh, some of his photographs. Um, and I was thinking a lot about his, his film Rise. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, I actually, the editor um, was a former student of mine who I just thought was fantastic. And I um, was really happy. This was their first, um, the first film that they edited where they, they'd done a lot of assistant editing work. And this was their first like editing credit. Um, and I think they did a fantastic job. Um, and, you know, we just um, really wanted to keep it, uh, energetic um, and feeling alive because I think that one of the things that comes through in all of the people in the film in 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 their own way is is how joyful dancing is for them um, and uh, we wanted the film just to reflect that the end um, so I just you know if there's anything no pressure but I just I, I'll just end you know want to end with you know, opening space for you too, if there's anything, any last thing you wanted to add or, or, or say about the, yeah. Um, I'm excited that this film is making its way around the film circuit. I think that it's fantastic that more and more people are getting to, to watch this little gem of a film that's, you know, um, so unusual, but like extremely poignant, um, especially now it's important for us to find it's important for me as a trans person to find joy. And I think that for our community, um, this film really goes a long way in kind of showing another side to our stories that um, we are vibrant people who are, you know, fully ready to take on life. And um, I know we've heard a lot of things that have made us very, very sad in the last, you know, just a little bit of time, but um, I don't know, this film kind of is a reminder to me, like there's a lot of things to live on for. Mm. It's nice. And I also, I also believe that the joy aspect of the film is very important. And I'm so glad that people are having the opportunity to see it. Um, I do have a small anecdote. Um, since this film has been making its way around the circuit at different places, um, including a festival in Portland, um, and someone who I danced ballet with when I was little, saw the film at the film festival and reached out to me on Facebook and she had, we hadn't talked to each other in years. Um, and, you know, I remember back, you know, way, way back, you know, being in like my little like tutu and tights and leotard and, you know, not necessary. And she was always like much more of like, you know, a technically great dancer and all that. And I was more just like, really sparkly, yay! You know, it's like, I, it's like, I don't care, I like this anyway. And so, um, but it was just so sweet. And she's like, yeah, like I could even see like in some of your movements, um, sort of the things you might've taken from ballet. And it's just so interesting because, you know, going, you know, having this, you know, such a fluid experience with my identity and then like just thinking of just how much I've evolved as a person um, over these years. And it's like, I'm, you're reaching out to me and I'm basically a very different person now. Um, but it's also like, oh yeah, no, I'm still very much me. And uh, thank you for acknowledging me. So that, that's really cool. Yeah, so it definitely is cool to see how this film is impacting people um, and will continue to impact people. <laughs>